Sangeeta, I'll pause the recording, huh? Yeah, uh, great. So we will get started uh, by the time other people join in. Uh, firstly, welcome to the Level Up with Glyphic again. Thank you so much for joining. So this is a session which we conduct every month uh, towards the end of the month where we share about one of the features of Glyphic or the topics that would be helpful for different organizations. So we have conducted webinars on partially integration, like a voice-enabled chatbots, or on the health of the dashboards or on different topics which are, we feel uh, or like which we have observed will be useful for all the organizations and will continue doing so. So in case you have anything that uh, in your mind that you think would be helpful for a larger community, please feel free to share. That is something that we will connect again. Uh, so I'll just start sharing my screen. Um, Uh, Sangeeta, could you please confirm if you are able to see my screen? Yes, yes. Great. Uh, so, ticketing system is uh, one of the most simple yet powerful features that we have at Clipic. Before we get into details of what ticketing system, why ticketing system, how uh, this is being used, I just want to make like two quick announcements. One, uh, like some of you might already know, like we uh, usually support on Discord and uh, we don't want to quote it, but yeah, like we are almost every time on Discord. So, but there's once in a week, we conduct like a call where any organization can join and get like a more uh, support in person on the call. So that happens every Thursday from 3.30 to 4 p.m. The call link is being sent on Discord uh, every single uh, week. So please do join in case you weren't aware of it already because that will give you a very super quick support uh, and also in case you want to discuss anything deeper. So that's one thing which we have want to mention. Second thing is, on the occasion of Christmas and New Year, our team will be unavailable from December 23rd to January 1st, which means like our support our calls and also the discard uh, support will be limited. Even in terms of mails, our uh, replies generally, unless it's a critical issues, if it is a critical issue, please do flag it on discard. Uh, we will definitely uh, like pull in the team members and uh, attend the critical issues. But in case if it's not a critical issue, then uh, the Discord has our GPT support bot, a GPT enabled bot. So we would uh, suggest you to refer to it or through our help documentation. Uh, like our team's response would be one delayed, two for non-critical issues, we might not be able to respond. So that's something which I just want to announce before we get started. Um, okay, now, why a ticketing system? So, uh, as you all know, generally the USP of all the chatbots is it's an automated conversation. None of you should be uh, like need not be actually sitting at the other end to actually reply. That's the reason the chatbots are scalable, sustainable, or in general, uh, it eases the work of all the team members. Then, why are we bringing again a human element to it? So that's uh, why is what I'm trying to address right now. One, in a lot of cases, as you must have uh, started with your chatbot journeys, you must have observed that a lot of times there is a need for a manual support in addition to the automated chatbot. So because a lot of times our users and users do not understand that it's an uh, automated chatbot, they keep uh, asking the same question. For example, if you see in this screenshot, like I've given three language options, but still the user is asking, hey, I want in this language. And the way we have set it in our automated flows is like if a user says anything apart from these three options, this is what the standard response you need to give. 
right? So uh, again, it's again has a limit. Like uh, by after three times, the flow will get stopped. But these are the questions that you would want to answer, or uh, that is the place where the additional support you can bring in this ticketing system. We'll get into more examples as we go ahead. But yeah, that's one of the major reasons uh, or the major problems that we have heard from different organizations. Hey, this is what is happening. Like, how do we deal with it? That's where we started with the idea of ticketing system. Second, uh, like a lot of times, uh, even with the regular WhatsApp groups or anything, when uh, we have a human into the picture, when these manual questions are like, the human questions are being answered, a lot of times, there are coming from a multiple places or they are coming in a common chatbot and like it's very difficult to understand like who has asked what and how do I actually answer it. So that's where we need like a systematic inquiry management process. So like I just want to understand here these are the 10 questions that I have got. This is what uh, this is how we can respond it. So to organize, assign, reassign and respond to make the whole system easy, the ticketing system feature would be super important. Three, in case you want to understand hey, what are the edge of the failure cases or like in this case, what are the other cases? Like I have, I have been giving this option like and what are the cases where people are answering something else apart from the regular one? That's where even like that's why this ticketing system would be important. So in case you uh, your organization wants to deal with any of these problems, then this particular feature will be super helpful for you. So when to use this ticketing system? Again, as I said, like in case you want to add any additional queries beyond your regular flows or a GPT integrated flows, because a lot of times uh, these, uh, like we have seen few organizations who have, you are experimenting with a chat GPT sort of integration where the answers are given by chat GPT, but as we all know, it's a journey. Like you won't crack everything in the first go. So you like, you want to understand like, hey, if the users, query, natural language query is not being answered by GPT also, we want to get some human into the picture. Or you want to use chatbot as a helpline. In general, like where uh, somebody is reaching out to you, like if you have a use case where people would be reaching out to your specific query, which you want to connect it with your any of your operational team members or your uh, any other external team members, this is one thing which will be very helpful. Now we'll get to how do we use this particular feature. So here I'm going to create like a quick flow. Uh, in case you are not familiar with this, this is like a tag system where you can tag every flow, every interactive message, every template message, which will help you to kind of put everything of a similar category into a folder structure. Later on, you can just put that filter and get only those flows because with a large number of flows that each one of you are creating, it's easy for segregation and organizing of your flows. Just in case you haven't uh, known this feature. So here I'm going to just take a simple case like where like uh, the first part, imagine the first part of the flow is where there's already some conversation going on or there's some question that is being asked by the, uh, uh, like being uh, brought uh, by the user. And then now you want to ask, or like maybe you have given three options. User has been continuously telling the other option. Then maybe after two times, a user is saying something else apart from the three options. You might want to say, okay, uh, tell us your query. Or if there's a chat GPT sort of system where the user asked a query, the bot has answered, then you have answered, uh, 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 like the bot asked, like, hey, did I solve your question? Yes, no. If a user say no, you want to ask, hey, can you please elaborate your query? So, or uh, like when you're asking for a feedback from a user. So there can be multiple scenarios. So here we will just start with a simple scenario where I'm just asking the user, please uh, tell me your query. And I'm saving all the results that I'm getting in a result name called query. Now I'll have something called open a ticket from the human agent. So here what I'm trying to do is whatever the question that the user has sent, 
I am trying to assign it to one of my staff members. So I'll explain what assigning means. In this case, like maybe I'll just assign to Krishna Priya or like say Arvind, just as an example. So here, what I'm trying to do is whatever the question that is coming, when Arvind opens it in his particular instance, he'll be able to see when all the tickets that are being assigned to him on his or her name. Now imagine like it, like a Swiggy's uh, help chat. Like when you reach out, the tickets goes to multiple people and it gets auto assigned. So this is like that sort of system where we are opening the tickets. Either you do not assign, you don't want to assign it to somebody. You can have like a common admin who is manually assigning. Or to make it easy, I want to say like, hey, any query this is coming uh, regarding level up, Arvind will uh, uh, take it up. So this is what I'm saying. So here I can one choose a category or create a category so that uh, I can say whatever is coming in this category, Arvind will handle. So now I'm saving uh, whatever the like I want to tell Arvind like, hey, this is the query that has come. So this is what it is. And then I'll say, uh, reply to the user saying, uh, thank you, one of our team members will uh, reach out to you within next 24 hours. So this is what I'm trying to do. Now, when I try to uh, preview it. I'll saying uh, I want to know how to submit activity. So I've just got the acknowledgement here. Now we'll see how this ticketing system actually helps your team to see and answer. But before we get into that, any questions till this part? Even a yes, uh, no, even a no is a valid answer. Good to, please please. Good to go, Krishna. Till now, it's good to go, uh, KP. Great. Uh, I, have a, I have a small question. Can yes, I, sir. at a time, assign it to two or three members or just one member in the team? No, it's generally one member at a time. The problem always with the more than one member is there's nobody to hold accountability, right? Like, it's like, even when I write email to three people, everybody would think the other person would answer. So there's no sense of accountability. But tomorrow, if you think that's a need that uh, we see or like more orgs feel that there's a need, then it will definitely consider that as well. Right now, Understood. it's just one person. Understood, yeah. Yeah. KP, uh, uh, to the following the same question, mm -hmm. uh, is any way like if I have more than... Uh, one uh, agents for the same thing and we can distribute the tickets uh, half half equally to for the uh, like if it there are two or three or four whatever number uh -huh. there so we can distribute the tickets among them equally interesting question i think uh, it can like i haven't tried this out but i think it can be done with a combination of split uh, uh, by uh, split randomly Maybe I'll split randomly, create two buckets in both the buckets. Like one bucket I'll assign to Arvind, one bucket I'll assign to Krishna. So technically mm -hmm. both are getting, but the chances of them getting tickets is different. So wow. that way I think it'll be kind of 50-50 division. Sure, sure. I haven't tried it out, but I think that will work. Not an issue. We can try. Yeah. Uh, hey Krishna, I have one question. So yeah, in our case where uh, there are pre-even level learners, right? So they might not understand the text message. So is there a possibility to send them a voice message? Uh, uh, to send them a voice message in the sense you want to reply them as a voice message. Correct, correct. Yes. You would be able to like, uh, but like, let, let us check on that. I think you should be able to. Okay, great. Thank you, you won't be able to capture the query in a form of a voice note as of now. Based yeah. on my understanding, but you would be able to reply to them in voice note, just like how you are doing, like for a normal message. Right, right. Got. It. Thank you. Any other questions before we proceed? Okay. So adding to what, uh, say Naveen and uh, uh, Swarupa said, here you can have it in multiple categories. For example, tomorrow you have asked a query. Please tell me your query and probably you have like a, a first level of a 
category like is your query on the activity is your query on the video is your query on something else then uh, it will be like a wait for response into three categories and each category you can have like uh, into again seg segregated into different categories and assign to different people so this is how you can like use it in different ways but this is like a very base structure that i'm trying to show now here is where you see all the tickets that are being raised in a one common place so now if you see uh, in my screen like first i'm trying to see the tickets uh, because it's assigned to arvind if arvind opens it he'll be able to see it in my tickets all the tickets that are assigned to his name but here right now i'm seeing all the tickets that are raised so i can one see like hey in the topic level up which is assigned to arvind this is the issue like hey i want to know how to submit the activity at this date it is being created and there's a unique id that is being created for everyone so this is what like one your base uh, collation of all the tickets would look like uh okay uh one it will uh, it's it will be like a common like it will be like a collation of all your tickets would be like so one way to also handle it is your admin can you uh, admin admin will be able to see and they can assign or reassign to anybody for example in this case i want to change the assignee to sangeeta so i can say uh, i can add any remarks uh, level up will be handled by sangeeta so that way i can reassign to sangeeta again so one the assigning and reassigning of the queries can uh, definitely happen now the bigger question is how do you uh, know like if sangeeta wants to access this particular query and a lot of times you need to understand the context of where it is happening like what's the previous discussion that led to this question is something that uh, is uh, something that a assignee or some person who is looking into the issue wants to know so you can click here and it will take you to the chat and the exact location where the query was raised so that way if i am sangeeta i it, it, it would be easy for me to answer hi uh, there is actually krishna there is a question from pradeep yeah. on the chat window uh, that he, he he has asked that can we define hours like uh, if there are two agents uh like 12 hour sheet and uh, 12 hour shift and uh, questions asked and we want to assign for shift one person and then the other for the next shift so can it be possible as of now no pradeep i'm just thinking out if there are any alternative ways through which we can achieve this but as much as i can think of no there's no i guess else. split method can work uh, on the basis of time no split is generally on a random basis uh but maybe i'll think through more and see if there are any alternatives uh, definitely uh kp uh, how you came to this uh, chat window because uh, there okay, was some yeah. work issue at my no end. so here there is like a small send okay. message sort of thing when you click on it it will take you to the chat and also to the location where all the feature was read so this is a new advancement that we have done in this version 2 of ticketing system right where it was uh, like even after this uh, like uh, there is high chance that the chat would continue it's not like ticketing system is like one separate thing so there is like in your big flow in one place where there is a deviation by user you will collect their query you will acknowledge them and you will continue them with the flow so there is a high chance that even after the ticket is raised there is a lot of conversation that is going on with the user right so in those cases it will take you to exact the same place where the ticket was raised so that it's easier for a person to read through and and then set the context saying like hey here is the answer something like that uh so this is something which a person can do so again within 24 hours if they want to answer it they can just answer directly here or if it's beyond 24 hours then uh, get like a template message uh, pre approved with a variable saying like hey template message here is the answer for your question have a variable and answer as a variable then just time every time just pull that particular template message fill the variables and send it so that is another way of answering if it's beyond 24 hours any questions on this part 
on how do you answer it can you show the example of the template thing which you told us krishna is uh, it positive? definitely for example uh, i'm just trying to see if there are any two template messages and uh, like you told if there are many other things after this query a user has raised how will the answer then appear for them answer will still appear as a new message to them so so that's so, the reason uh, yeah so that's the reason i would then suggest like have something with two variables like okay. hey your question was this and your answer to that question is this so i would suggest to recopy and paste this particular question again and then give your answer here okay okay got it got that it. way they understand hey, this is the question that ah. i asked this is the answer they will they'll be able to connect got it understood understood okay yeah so even like if you are answering within 24 hours also this is like a standard structure i would recommend so yeah. that people know the context like in this particular in chatbot that you have observed like you don't have this reply wala option as of now got so it got so if you are getting it that's a different story but right now this is like a way to answer so this is what i was referring to uh, sarupa like if you uh -huh. have like two variables then when you get the variable option like hi in this case just think like hey your question is got it one, uh -huh. your answer is this got it okay? got it yeah understand uh, any any other but anybody else like who are uh, not clear with this particular part uh i guess variables where we have we can like uh, pull their names or the organization name or whatever means variable uh, can be anything right? variable can be anything you can even like write like a normal text to variable so variable okay. is anything that is different for different people yeah that's correct and uh, yeah. we can fetch the question as well what you say uh, i'm just uh, simplifying what you said like okay uh, we have to fetch the question in the second variable and then we can put the answer to that matter for example this is my question right and uh, say uh, i'm just trying to find anything which has two variables say as an example like i'll put my question here i'll put my uh, this is how you do it in this case i'm just saying thank you so it's just like way where i can add like i would recommend to have the question here answer here and yeah that should be clear to be clear to correct is that clear to me yeah uh, so here uh, because this is the ticketing system right so there will mm -hmm. be some status of the ticket uh, once it will be open then it will be in process i'll, I'll show that right uh, so how we will uh, share the status uh to the end user because if they have opened the ticket and we have to close it or uh, we have to tell the status let's say in within 24 hours we are not able to solve the ticket and we have to uh, let them know the at least the status how the ticket is going on like like it is in progress right so mm -hmm. somebody will be uh, handling it so we can inform them so that they are uh, well aware uh, like the ticket is uh, in the hands of some agent and they'll get some reply right so that kind of uh, solution how we can share right now we don't have that so you are uh, saying like hey uh, say uh, in a swiggy or something or like where i see like hey your ticket is assigned to an agent agent right. will get back to you in next 20 uh, 20 minutes whatever so right that level of uh, synchronous uh, coordination wouldn't be there in your case so you have to plan that in advance like hey what's the practical amount of time that your team would be able to get back so you uh, should be able to just say up front like so that the other person is also not waiting for your answer hey don't worry we'll get back to you in next 24 hours so that's a kind of reassurance that you can give it there's no provision that your user will be able to come and uh, check uh, like and ask like hey uh, what's the status of my query so this ticketing system one important thing to notice this ticketing system is not something which your user will know for your mm -hmm. user it's just a regular chat that is going if you see for him or her that's like just a regular chat they don't know like ha huh, okay my tickets are uh, kept in a place and one person is being assigned to it that person came and checked and answered 
they wouldn't know. For them, it's just like a manual intervention that happened. Like one person looked right into their question and they have come and responded. That's it. So sure. for them, there's no point of knowing like, hey, is my ticket in progress or something? That's something which the organization has, has to make it part of your own structures or operations on how do you handle such cases. Right. And can we see this data on the dashboard as well? Uh, how many tickets get uh, raised and uh, how many tickets we yes. sort? Yes, uh, I'll show you. Uh, so I was getting to that part. So one, as I said, like assigning, reassigning is one thing. This is going to the chat. There is one way where you can close. So like, it's always like when you put it as a part of your process, you ask your team members, like say, hey, once you have completed the ticket, close it with a remark added. Uh, closed it uh, as uh, it was X, Y, Z uh, question, something like that. If that is something which I just say, so you ask people to update the status of it. So you can see like what are the closed tickets. Like level up Sangeeta's one is closed. So that's one way where you can one assign, reassign and also close and open the tickets. That's one thing. Second thing is uh, like I'll get to the part where you are asked your question. But I just want to show quick other features like you can sort by ID. So you can sort based on like the ID number, like in the increasing or decreasing order. This is like a unique ID, which will help you when you're coordinating within your team, like saying, hey, uh, like did somebody resolve 83? When there are a lot of questions coming, it's easier to coordinate. And there is also sort by in terms of the created issue, like the date of the creation, that is something which is there. And even the issue like based on the alphabetics within this, this is one thing. And search also you can assign by the issues body. You can assign by the topic. You can assign by the person name. We right now we don't have search for by ID. That is something which we will also uh, which we are missed in this version and which will cover it up in the next session. And now the question which uh, Navin asked. So we have not created any separate dashboard to it. Right now the way which you can do is you can export it. You can put it from filters from this date to this date, and you will be able to export it in a CSV format. And right now, the way which you, there are two ways to do it. One, you can, uh, again, do a pivot and stuff and to understand like to which person, how many queries were raised or to which topic, how many queries were raised, in which date range, how many questions were raised. So these are the some things that you can do it manually by pivot table using your export option. For one of the organizations which we have recently uh, done like a consulting work, we have uh, like Questia Lens is the name of the org. We have created one page in their dashboard for tickets, like on the whole, what are the total number of tickets that were raised for the date filter. So that's like a separate consulting that we have done uh, for uh, Questia Lens. So that is also something that is possible. Like if you are getting more tickets and if you want to get into detailed analytics without being need to export, you can definitely link it to your regular dashboards. Okay? Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Krishna, we had a question a few minutes back from Swarupa, Swarupa KEF. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the, uh, they, they wanted to know that if they will be replying to the user by typing in two variables, will it not kill the flow uh, for the user? Uh, with the new template message starting, it will kill someone. So that's the reason it's suggestive to actually do it within 24 hours. In your case, especially within 24 hours, it will not kill the uh, existing flow. Because you are not triggering a new flow as such. Got it. Understood. Yeah. Okay. And Swarupa, like, uh, like I just remember the first question that you asked where if you can exp uh, I, uh, like uh, assign more than uh, one person to a ticket of a single category again split by will again work here it just kept out of my mind but yeah you can use it in a combination of split by got it yeah yeah uh cool so uh one last thing here that we have in this uh, current uh, version is you can close tickets in bulk so a lot of times like you, you are running it for a particular flow, which is for a particular event or something. And later on, you have addressed everything to any other means. Then you want to just update in bulk because there are like a lot of tickets pending. Then you can definitely 
choose the topic which you want to say and you can close all the tickets in that particular topic. So this is one more feature where instead of you reaching out to us, like you can do it from your UI. Krishna, I had a question here. Yeah. Uh, is it possible that for an issue which I have raised already and assigned somebody, like maybe I have assigned uh -huh. Krishna and okay. in future I am facing the same issues, can I reopen the same ticket uh, with the, like, in, uh, if it's the same scenario, is it a possibility I have I can reopen it without like uh to like the ease of time and not writing down again and understood. Yeah. No, right now that level of categorization you would be only able to do through the topics. So if it's like a registration is a topic, then a worksheet is a topic. Then all the registrations are assigned to Krishna. All the worksheets are assigned to Sangeeta. So tomorrow you know like if any other question is coming in the, the terms of registration because Krishna has done it in the past, she'll be able to answer it quickly. So that's like a hypothesis that we are going. It's not like a specific question wise that we are seeing like hey, uh, this like there's no subcategories or like uh, categorization further in terms of issues. Even I, I think uh, the reopening thing can be done from the end user end and uh, as it is a chat kind of thing, so there right. is no possibility to reopen from their end, right? For a user, like as I, as I said earlier, for a user, it won't be like a reopen. Again, don't take it like an exact uh, way how a Swiggy or something operates, like hey, did I answer? So the the uh thing that you can do is like when you answer your question so maybe like when you answer your question or like when you send like a template message then send like an interactive message after that hey did i answer your question so like probably after here is the answer then like or even in a template message because the charge for one template message or one plus one is the same so after you send a template message you then send an interactive message hey did i answer your question yes or no so, like, it's up to the team member to see if the person has responded yes, and then only they come here and close the ticket. For a user, uh, they won't be able to reopen the ticket as such. Got it, or Krishna. Maybe you have to uh, then send Sorry. an interactive message. Okay, click, like, I'm just thinking it out loud as of now. For example, I gave here, here is the answer. Then I send an interactive message which has, like, a button called reopen. Then reopen is a separate flow for me where with the keyword reopen and that reopen will have another ticketing uh, system in place. So like they can technically reopen and create a new ticket. So correct, that's, correct. We can yeah, handle that's that. I'm just thinking it out uh, as I speak. So these are like, uh, but definitely I appreciate all these questions, but these are some things that we can, we have to kind of use different features, mix and match and uh, kind of get what we uh, expect uh, it to be. Just not one more question I yeah. had. Uh, I just wanted to ask like, are we storing it here particularly in this interface or uh, like how we uh, collect data in BigQuery and GCS? Will this ticketing wala thing also uh, get stored there or we can Great. only yeah ticketing uh, also like uh, whatever you are adding remarks whatever the questions that are coming it will go to the big way so technically, any data that is being transacted to uh, Glyphic goes to BigQuery. So that's the reason we were able to create uh, the dashboard for Quest Alliance for the ticketing system because it goes to BigQuery. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Cool. It's so good uh, till now. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, here are the key features that we have discussed till now. So I'll just pause for like five seconds here. In case you have anything, we can take that up. Yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, so here are few NGOs who have already used this feature, the version one of our features, and we uh, would like to thank them because uh, they were the ones who told us, hey, this is how you can actually, uh, like this is what we need more for us to be able to make full utilization of this feature. So firstly, thank you for all of them. Uh, so I just want to call it out like these are the different ways that uh, they are using. Again, these all kind of uh, in principle are the same things, but the way they are using it is uh, quite different. So Naidisha, Rebenfit and Quest are using it like a helpline to answer user question, queries or questions. Uh, so it can be like a question on an event that they are doing or on a particular uh, registration that they are doing where they have to choose a category where uh, people are confused in choosing a category or People have certain questions on certain activities. So that's where they are using this as a helpline. Naidisha is actually using the whole chatbot as a helpline where the questions comes from the parents of uh, special uh, able, able children. So they connect them to the external counselors. Uh, so like external counselors come and actually answer the questions of these parents. So they are using this as a helpline to connect uh, for counselors it's easy for to see everything at one place and actually answer it and udyam is actually using uh, chat gpt in their flows or in their help flows to answer the questions of the students in terms of the content or uh, the operations of the flow so they are using it in addition to the chat gpt flow so the gpt would give the first answer and then say if your answer is satisfied or not if they are not satisfied then the question uh, goes to the ticketing system. So that's where they're using, that's the most powerful combination. Then TAP is used is using it to understand the edge cases or failure cases. So they want as a team, it's internally to understand, hey, what are the other scenarios? Like if there are these three buttons, what is the other that the people are saying? So one way of doing it is going through BigQuery and trying to pull your data and uh, reading through it. But they are trying to bring it in one place and see, like to understand, like, hey, these are the different things that the people are saying. Or wherever the failure cases are happening, they want to understand and get notified earlier. So that's one way which TAP is using it uh, in a different way. And uh, Sneha team is uh, like is having like a menu of a frequently asked questions. So it's like a list of asked questions. And then they say like, hey, if you want to explore more, then ask us a question. So yeah, these are some of the ways people are using this feature. So in case you have some other ways, uh, please do use it. Please do explore with us. Like we would love to actually sit with you to help you implement this feature as well. So one more tip, like we have discussed in some ways, like how we can use a combination of template messages, interactive messages, and split by randomly node uh, while we uh, using this ticketing system. This another way is tying up with the send staff member a message. So every time a uh, like a message comes, you can actually notify. For example, in our case, when the ticket is raised to Sangeeta, so notify Sangeeta like, hey, Sangeeta X person have raised X query. Uh, so please go and answer. So if you want to make your whole system much uh, quicker and smarter. So yes, uh, that's majorly it from our end. Uh, any uh, questions that you have? Okay, I don't think we have anything. So, uh, yes, um, just give me one second. <laughs> 